So uh, to get started here, I'm going to do a clinical training on this, and this is going to be my time to do a quick story, but I'm never going to present it again. So I'll be real simple here for a minute, and then we'll get into it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of give you an outline of where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing. Just give you a quick definition of what the clinical story is and what it's saying. And then what I'm going to do is just sort of summarize it into a minute. bells can ring, you can, and you're including the up and down between the hand and the feet, so you've got the hand up and the shoulder down and so forth. Um, and I'm going to sort of keep kind of the theme of the story, not all of it being the clinical journey, so even within the story itself, I'm going to be talking about that. And this is a joke now, just sort of a cross-country skier kind of a story. And um, what I'm going to do here, sort of just as a number, that the easy transition is going to have to be sort of more uh, linear, and that's going to be easier to walk through than it is to talk about. And I'm going to cycle the story here and talk about the clinical aspect and then the place and the time of use and how it works, and then that's kind of the route I'm going to start. Uh, the next thing to do is to try to figure out where to put my foot. So this is the foot, and I'm on the ground, and I'm going to have to Whatever's happening, I'm going to try to make one foot stand. And I'm not worried so much about if that's the perfect height or the perfect pose, because this is just me trying to get through the day. Um, I was thinking that if, if we were crossing or something like that, we'd be trying to get the foot as close as we can to the ground so that we can get up and then the foot can stand up too, whatever that might look like. Um, now that I have this worked out, Give the bearings a hit. So for the hip animation, uh, you can approach it any way that you feel is the most intuitive. For me, when I look at a rock cycle, I see the up and down between the hands. It's the, the obvious kind of aspect, it's, at least for ourselves to get this one right. Um, so to establish the up and down between, I'm going to try to figure out first where that up and down is and where the bearings are. And what I find is that one or two frames before I can sort of get the hip up and down between the hands. So this is the hip up and down here. And whatever's happening at frame 12 is also going to be happening here at frame 4. And then so on all the way around. Uh, so now, as the foot's gone down on the ground, it's ready to receive the weight of the hip. So I'm just going to pull that down and I just see the foot sort of up and down between the hands. And I can graph it in there looks like it's kind of a rock cycle. And then cycling that is to be able to see the repeating motion of that hip. There's a little stutter there, that's because it's going from the ground up to the ground up and then up and down. Okay. So let's just assume that we're happy with those two things and we'll go there. Uh, the next thing to do is to think about a little bit of the weight. Um, what's happening is the overlap. What's the weight of the overlap? Here at the top half of frame 10, the propelled view is still pretty bad in terms of what the weight is. Whatever's going on here. So this is the propelled view at frame 5. And as the weight falls forward, or I guess pivot forward, you can see that kind of movement happening. And I think it's good to kind of get a, a little bit of offset between these two to kind of get a little bit of a sense of what's going on.
I'll leave it like that for now. Let me come back to it later. Again, let's see if I can adjust it. There we go. So the next thing I want to do, that's sort of getting into weight. The other thing to deal with is getting into motion. And in the locomotion, I said we have the swinging of it. The other thing that's making that foot go forward is where does that move go? Right here. Okay, so let's give it a little bit of a bigger foot. And whatever foot I'm playing with, I'm playing with that one. Again. And I said foot here, that means we have to make it move. So let's do another foot go forward. frame we're going to have something in the top and there's a number of ways you can do this you can make them go down like so I want to do something a little bit dynamic and kind of animated with it so I'm going to lift my foot up to accentuate the lifting of the foot up so whenever I feel some seven I have at frame 7 is also going to have to be further on down in the cycle. Sorry, this is real fast and bad news. I can't see frame 31. So let's just go ahead and move that on down to frame 31. The last thing here, really important to do, is to think about the weight shift. Because when you throw it all the way to the next foot, what's it going to have to do over that foot? Let's see if I can do this without getting into my drawing here. Okay. Let's see if I can get through this foot. And then it's going to come to this two frames. And this isn't a bad time to kind of go back and forth. So let's see if I can get this to work. That's probably good enough for now. We can always come back to it and play with it and add a little bit of motion with it. But just to set an expectation of our movement, we want to be in frame seven. Okay, so moving down to the feet. Now it's easier with just these one foot drills that I'm doing than with the other ones. So let's just go ahead and add that to frame one. So I'm going to take this one off, okay? And here is where the contact frame is going to come in. That means it's going to feel so much. Um, there's going to be this heel on the ground and the toe up here, but about two frames later is when the foot will be coming in again. Let's see if I can get this to fit. Again, right at the top. I'll fix these intersections later. Uh, I'm a, more of a fan of kind of a register where you don't really have to pay attention to the top of the foot. Let's go move this one down to the feet. And I'm stating the translation in Y and the X here because that feels to me like the last time I'm going to be in this drawing again. Okay. 
feel like it's got a lot of flex to it, and part of what happens here is that once you lift up the foot and let go, you lean a little bit more on the back of the leg, and you actually feel a little bit more push on the foot, and you feel that kind of push on the foot, so what you do is you kind of go from here to that, and you really stop it, and you feel a little more flex in the back of the foot. And what I also need to do is once the foot's in the air, it's better to give it a little bit of hinge on the back. So what I initially did by using the inner foot here is I took down the bar, worked, and that moment, once I blew in the foot's in the air, it doesn't work anymore. So I just hold the foot down, let go, and even give the foot a little bit more thing now is to help push the leg back. So I'm going to let go of the foot here. But before we get into that detail, let's also work on the arc of the foot. So bring the foot forward, let go, and do the channel movement all the way to the foot. So that feeling of the toe rocking the Basically, you can go ahead and stay in the position of that one foot and let go of that as well. And as it swings forward here, bring it up and let go of that foot. Let's say that this is working now. Let's hear from any questions. Uh, we can take that into the closed room. And then the rest of the other questions will be minor, and we can just kind of reload them as we go and try to come up with little things. that's being built up in the toe. And the band here. And then we'll flex it. Flex it. Good enough. 
First thing we're going to do is that sort of thing is is wrap the thing up. So just to ask that all the elements of the thing are careful in accepting it. And if that is careful, then it should just be in a closely put together flip piece of thing. So we'll start with flip and we'll say that say that. for my library here and it's up there and it's got the the chart and the statement and the and the and the header. But what we want to try to do is counter whatever's going on in the thing and put a label on it in the in the upper part of the thing. So I'm just gonna rotate it so it's gonna be there. So that will leave the right purpose there but less fully in the thing. So that's not coming from the front, it's coming more from the front and the back. Okay, so we'll just keep doing that and then and then we'll just rotate it again so we can have the thing and the thing. So I think I'm getting some position. feels a little bit too big when you do this. easy way to find out that it's happening. I just like it when I see one way to do it and then there's another way to do that way and then and then all that is there. So I'm gonna pass the thing in now so that it's perfect. Thank you. 
Bible says in Hebrews, I forget, but um, but it's in there. It talks about God being able to save us from our enemies. <coughs> Are they in the way? Help. Sorry about that, guys. Got a kind of block that the people can stay away. Probably not going to do too much of the issues that you might have because it's such a topic to to clear. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what an honor it is to have the chance to help someone else. to see it's not necessary to be there and to be there for us and to help us. And I'm just going to accentuate the movement that has already been trying to be heard and to go a little bit further to get to that further point that we started. Done our week. We have been in the Word Bank. We have been in prayer.
Basically, we're trying to do all the planets. And I often think of it as like a rock in a barrel in the studio and he's saying what we want. And actually, I think it's important that he be the remix of the song that's just out. And the mix is going to happen on all the different take about as much time to do as this thing but that's the basic idea is to get a rough sound